All right, I guess this one will be much less controversial. So relax, uh, you know, <laughs> breathe and everything like that. So we're talking about CI, which everybody loves. Uh, oh, I'm Bjorn, and I, I used to do networking and VPF. I still do, but uh, here at Risk Lab, I ended up doing CI. So I'm the CI guy now. Cool. Uh, I'll just switch like that. OK, so a little bit about the uh, rationale for uh, the patchwork CI. So it's pretty, you know, pre merge hook. We try to do, uh, you know, build things and sort of get a notion is this good enough to merge and, you know, get off Palmer's back pretty much. Uh, yeah, I'll figure I'll, I'll do, I'll run through how it works and then we can, you know, talk about the things afterwards. Uh, what else? Uh, short history, all patchwork, or all subsystems have their own patchwork CIs, pretty much. Uh, we as well, as the risk five. So we ported, uh, we started out by running the net dev uh, ones called NIPA and ported at the risk five. So it's running on the corners, where's corner, corner left? He didn't want to be around. <laughs> yeah, someone's name on the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, uh, so Connor has been hosting the old uh, Patchwork CI for, for quite some while, and it's been running on the, uh, uh, yeah, on, on a market chip machine. Anyway, so it was, uh, it was time to move on. So a lot of problems, uh, not a lot of problems. It was working, but you know, that guy that comes in, you're back, Connor, welcome. Uh, end up doing all the work. So if, if the CI broke, which is, you know, you no, know, as will all CI. It, it, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. So it ended up being all the work for Kana. So we figured let's, let's try to change that. So there's then this rice thing came up, which you can think of like Linaro, but for risk five, uh, and we got a bunch of VMs. Uh, so we figure out, let's move to GitHub. It's not like we love GitHub, but it's a uh, it's what most people use, and it's sort of hopefully we can get some you know community thing going on. We'll see. So instead of using the the pile of Python that we're we're using at uh, Markchip, we moved to something. Was that? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, we moved to something that Meta was using for BPF. So my, my background comes from BPF, so you know. So Meta was, uh, 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 they published their KPD source, which is the kernel patches daemon. And the grand plan is like this. So hopefully it'll be something that'll easier to maintain. Uh, if we're lucky, we get, you know, contributions from, uh, from the community on the CI. It's not like that. That'll happen. We'll see. And hopefully easier to scale. That means we can just add GitHub runners if we want to, you know, speed up the build. Uh, and all of this is hosted on GitHub on, on a project or organization, whatever you call it in GitHub, under the Linux Risk Five. Uh, cool. So I'll just you know blast through how it works. So the the, th the thing in gray is running on the Google Cloud. Uh, so the kernel patches daemon starts out by syncing all the Git trees from you know uh, what do we have in Risk Five? We have the for next and we have fixes. And now we have also a repo with uh, with the CI uh, source. So it starts syncing the Git repos. Uh, it'll pull in all the so pull in a series from from Patchwork. It then takes the uh, it bakes so yeah so it bakes the Git tree with the CI uh, files on top of it and then the new series. So if that so. If the series fails to merge, then that's the first thing. So it doesn't merge and get a, like, a, it doesn't work. Uh, if it managed to merge it, the, the build will be done on one of the dedicated GitHub runners. Build completes, we have some results, and then the daemon will scrape these results from uh, the pull requests and publish it do patchwork, and you probably have seen all these uh, traffic lights, right? Quick about that. It's uh, uh, the patches daemon, yeah, again from Meta, and it's. Uh, go ahead. Wait, wait for Mike. What's that? 
in the previous slide, the last box was uh, in the uh, seeing divergence. Yeah, is it? Like, tree we were talking about. Was that? Great stable tree, in the GHG response for the Git. What's that? Oh, oh, the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh right, that's a Git. Oh, that's pull yes, the request. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, that's a demon that scrapes everything. Uh, I won't go into those details. What else? Maybe this is a bit interesting. So what what we do is that we we have this uh, GitHub CI, which is called Workflow in GitHub Speak, uh, and we just directly ported what we did with the old CI and pulled it to GitHub. So uh, it's pretty much it's a pile of bash and we glue it together with the YAML. So the idea is to, I mean, while it's possible to run a GitHub CI locally, it's easier to just have, you know, a simple local bash file and just type make and it's solo or build or whatever. And it, it'll mimic what, what's being done on the, uh, on the GitHub runner, if that makes sense. Cool. So here are the tests. So right now, this is the only things we're do we're doing. It's uh, we build third two bit, and so also I'll get back to this, this ties into like what Palmer and Ren was talking about. Like how do we sort of try to keep the the number the, the build matrices sane, which is we'll get into later. Uh, yeah, we build third two bit, sixty four bits for varial flavors. You know, muscle without muscle stuff like that. Uh, a bunch of checks. Very much. Uh, right. So for the runners, we're using a Docker-based build, and uh, we're doing cross compilation on the ARM64 system. Uh, we're using the tool chains from kernel.org. Uh, some other tools, and we're using something that uh, in Git has called ephemeral runners, and that's that's pretty much just saying that okay, what we uh, when you enter a build, you have a clean state, which for some reason is not the default for GitHub. So usually you have just, uh, when you enter the build, you, you have like, you know, like a dirt state. That's it. Uh, I don't know if that, I'll go into it anyway. So the, like, how do you sort of think about these traffic lights? So I guess this is more interesting if you're a, a contributor. So when you publish a, a patch or a series to the mailing list, you get up, uh, you, the build is being performed, and if you click, if you see this, so this is Charlie's example, for example, and it's not pointing out Charlie in the way, but it's, uh, we're having total 12 tests, and the 13th test is sort of uh, the overall state of the whole build. So if, if uh, for example, if you look at uh, the right-hand side here, the top one is stating like, uh, uh, for the full pull request, that means that if any of the any of the patches in the series fail or get a warning, we'll get red there. Or likewise, if you have a warning anywhere, we'll get a warning there. So, and again, like I'm I'm not a UI guy, so we can probably you know improve this. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, so for example, here for some reason uh, it failed with a you know RV64 GCC build. There's a lot of, um, I don't know, 
we could discuss like how strict we're gonna want to, want to make check patch for example and if it's even interesting i don't know running check patch on an org specific specific time to you know generate a lot of weird warnings so. that's the element, right all this weird assembly stuff we do exactly so i don't know, know if it's a good idea or not but yeah. it's uh and anyway, i would go this is just you know like sales slides more it's like you can click into it and get a build log and so you can figure out what went wrong I won't skip the demo. The demo is like click that link and you can, you know, click around uh, resources here. I guess maybe we should get into like the next steps here. So right now it's like 12 tests, but we would like to, or like the grand plan is having like something proper to release tests. So we I based it on something like Palmer's release test. I don't know if that's, maybe it's the risk five release test. So I did the build matrices based on what Palmer does for every release. And it ends up with, you know, 144 builds, uh, 216 boots, QMU, and, you know, and boots include very, like, drills down to a number of different boots, you know, DT, SPI, UEFI, different implementation of UEFIs. And I mean, it, it, it's a lot. And it sort of ties back to like this, how much, like, <laughs> should we deprecate things because the, the this will just explode and be a lot of work for the build parts, but yeah, next steps here, like we need to obviously perform uh, uh, or fix performance here because with these VMs we pay when they're idle. So we need, we need to make sure that the utilization is at, at a maximum. So, yeah, so this is also, you know, things we can work on, uh, but I guess I'll, you know, let's land here. So which is like, what, what, what do we want to see in this, uh, pre-merge? Like, is it sort of, does it make sense to release this? I know you have said Paul, that you, you would like to see like a complete build and, you know, boot, boot everything. Yeah. And I mean, so, it's tough, right? It's like, that stuff I have, it's just a random collection of things. It's for me too. Yeah. That's why it's stuff every once in a while. It's like, you never feel like I want to do anything. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's the only place where we actually. If, if I look around at the other CIs, it's they pretty much you know they they uh, they build Def Config and that's it. So there's yeah. no. Just really got that. It could be a whole alternative around stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, like mixed in. Just the simple config, just miss all sorts of stuff. Now maybe that's because we should definitely get a bunch of maps. But yes, I think I. So like there's other architecture that boots the entire uh, all the metrics saying it should be not APA, SPA, not the DT. Yeah. So then the current status is just a game that it put on like the current the current status is it, that's that's just a cross build. So the current status is like thirty builds, but what we're working on is getting this up, and we're realizing that it's it's a lot of builds. Yeah. So we have that running internally on the GitLab thing, but it's and also like. Like or... Actually, as, as, as soon as the, the baseline moves, we rebuild everything. No, I mean, the like, kernel moves for every release, but uh, for the EPK2 or reboot, we could do it like the release. Cycle. All right. Oh, okay, gotcha. No. So we're we're sort of <laughs> we're pinning something. So we're not rebuilding the world. So it's yeah. like we, we, we pin, you know, Certain EDK2, U boot, whatever, and but the actual kernel will that, that's the only thing we'll keep moving. Yeah, because way too many moving. It is, yeah, definitely. I mean we even with those pin, it's way too much. So yes. at some point also we need to upgrade those. Yeah, definitely. But that that could be a for example like bumping uh, GCC and a little bit yeah. of release and stuff like that. That could be like a monthly or less common thing, but still there were questions in the back. Oh. Regarding the first point on rail distributors, we have went to work on uh, getting to simplify the Yeah, that, that's that's where it came up. That's, that's, <laughs> it's part of KPD now, though. It's, so. it's a bit hard to get all the information from GitHub and I think of email. So I very grateful from the user experience. But it should be published maybe in the Cool. So you guys be able to Are you you're the guy that's working on KPD, right? At Meta. Hi, my name is Meta. It's already in Meta. 
Yeah. What's hard is to get the input from the build model, not from the data itself. From right. So you have to have such a structured model. Yeah. That, actually, that's why we forked your work, because we're, we're doing a per patch build. So when we pull in a series, we'll build each patch. So we have a structured log, which we parse. It's nasty, but it's, that's how we do it. Yeah, and that, that's what that's what we're doing in the our thing. But it's you know it's a it's a reg expel, so it's... Um, we should probably talk outside of the room for how you guys see it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And it's just you know, shout out to the meta folks. It's it's good stuff. So and it's it saved a lot of work for me. I was gonna ask if you can think what we're pushing through. I know we had a discussion earlier about what, what's the old tool chain we support. Right. Is that something we should be testing? Uh, right now, we're just trying to pick like the latest stable on kernel.org for both LLVM and GCC. So that means, yeah, so the answer is no, we don't. <laughs> What's that? I looked. I haven't. Right. Yeah. Okay, snowball. All right, interesting. Oh. All right, yeah. Snow patch, thank you. I'll check it out. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't have anything more. I guess it's, I mean. Yeah, if you have a lot of questions or anything. I, I guess, I mean, at, at some, right now, the, we're, we're using QMU. Like, yeah. again, not, not you, yeah. Right yeah, but I mean, it's, uh, I, I would prefer having your know, proper hardware or real hardware, but then again, like, what boards? How many boards? Yeah, exactly. So, so it's another set of variables. Exactly. And yeah. for the patchwork, we just do the build, right? Or do you do the boot test for? No, again, so right now only build, but the like in the work is doing boots. For and the well, CD or every patch in the CD? Every patch. No, for the series, sorry, for the series. So we'll do first uh, all the like simple tests or build tests just for, for the patches. So check for, you know, bisectability. And then the series part will do that build for like the matrices that uh, the Polymer has in the release test. So yeah. we, we can't do that for each yeah, patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, even with that, that's why like we're waiting to after, uh, put it out because it's, take, it's taking too long. So, I mean, the latency between you, what, what like when a contributor submits a patch, when you get response, I don't know, that's maybe that's up for discussion as well. Like what is a reasonable get back is like a week if you publish a patch you get build results a week later. I don't know. That's a week is fine. A week, is fine. No, a week yeah, we, yeah. I would say like a day, a day, a day is okay, but it's if it's more than a day, why not make it good? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How long is it now? Right now it's twenty minutes per patch. And but and and, and right now that's you know, that's nothing. I mean the one way that we're running right now. The, like the, the monster build thing, that's, <laughs> that's a long time. Yeah, that takes hours for any Yeah. So much to see that. Is this 20 minutes just a boot or just a build? What? So 20 minutes for a patch, you said? Yeah, that, that's the current one, just the builds. Just the builds. Yeah. Okay. Once we add boot. Yeah, builds and tests. So, you know, these, uh, yeah. yeah, check patches and like the one of the 30 yeah. checks. Um, are you using incremental builds? Uh, Word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Right. Right. One problem with the R stuff, like I said, R stuff tends to touch a lot of metrics. 
car crashes tend to be a lot of headers, and headers that like trigger everything to rebuild. So incremental builds, like when they work, are great, but they fall over. Even simple patches, if you touch one of the harsh headers, you're basically building. I mean, we're doing the low hang of fruit, you know, CZ cash and all that, but it's still, it's yeah, 20 minutes, it's for a series, it's, it's much. I think the original, the original build scripts uh, were like largely based on what the net, what NetDev was using. They, but I, I yeah. don't quite remember if NetDev was doing that for your builds in other words. We were building the patch, then incrementally building the previous commit, and then incrementally building the commit again to get the to get the actual warnings out. Um, those second two bills were pretty quick, but the, the, the first one was on quite hard. I'm yeah. not sure. With, when I'm using a lot of my Jenkins, the first patch in the series would be like five months. Yeah. Uh, the second ones might be like a significant shorter than five months. Sure I, uh, I, and we spend a lot of, I mean, most of the time we're spending linking, actually. So. I'm, I'm not sure yeah, with the, the um, GitHub version of the GitHub. Build two matches in the series, the same match is quicker or not. Mm, it is, it is. Yeah, so it's. Yeah. You're spending all your time linking, you do like go last or something. Does that go away faster? Yeah, yeah we can't, I think that'll be fine. But um, if I remember correctly, in our case, we essentially build and save the artifacts into the product cache right. for you being the pace. And that's all we get. It's hoping that. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. You use like the use that like GitHub hashing of your build directory. Yeah. Okay. So I have used it like five or ten years. Yeah. GitHub hash is easy. Yeah. Okay. So that works. That's easier. So what I mentioned earlier, the email and emails. I think you do that only if you pay. What was that? Uh, you also mentioned the email. Email you that yeah, I, we, we don't. There, there's, a, there's support for it, but we, we don't. So the question is, like, if, is that a good idea? Like, do, do people want more mails or I don't know? If you're probably good to yeah. get that email. Like, just the fact of like, CA pages. Yeah. So that would be a good one. Uh, otherwise, so, uh, is there a way to, I don't know, like, CA has its own stuff. So, somewhere we have to distribute the load. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, then... yeah, exactly. So I guess that's a question. Well, that's a question like post merge, pre merge. Like, how much do we want to do in the patchwork part, yeah. and how much do we want to do in the pre merge? And it's. I was going to ask if you had any more thoughts on that overlap because I do see a good. I see a good there, there's a lot. There's a lot of overlap. So well, yeah. There's, there, but there's more. Like, currency is not doing any of the pre merge stuff. So yeah. Stuff is all great, but then is doing. Hardware, but keyboard labs, yeah. and moving and stuff like that. So there's a lot of potential yeah. collaboration. There's, there's not a ton of overlap as far as collaboration. So yeah. you have any ideas on where those, where maybe you can look at and where kind of merge the two together or collaborate? Good one. Yeah, definitely collaborate. But let's, you know, what? Yeah. You guys do pre merge tests anyway? Yeah. It's all, it's all basically just taking it's all and none yeah. of the pre patch stuff either. It's just take a branch, yeah. and build it. Yeah, but we are yeah. doing like the, the whole matrix of you know dev configs yeah. plus compiler versions yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But that just becomes you know build infrastructure. The more builders you have, the more you can do. Yeah, but and doing it all pre merge is just a day. And then you add all the pre merge stuff per patch, and you yeah. you add another really cool. another couple dimensions to the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. And you do the financial for the pre release stuff, like on your next branch? There you do. Yeah, like when I push the next kernel CI, it sends me an email from hours ago, hours like this. But it's just, it's it's just on that, thing. it's on whatever the latest committed yeah. branch is. It's not doing the series pre yeah. yeah. patch stuff. But it does, you know, compile our versions and all that stuff. And it does root tests, it's a hard part too. But then trying to get it all running pre merge is just like, so I don't know, maybe it makes sense to add like all like all the configuration that you run locally for the release, moving that to the post merge. I don't know. I think we should do is we should look through the configs that I run and figure out if they make any sense anymore. Yeah. They do, we should add them as like config. I guess I should probably. So we should go through all the tests and figure out if they make any sense somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, someone's there. Not the Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the for the bird batch fuel version should be. I actually don't know how it works, but essentially normally you just send in batches to the mailing list. There is a robot that checks that. Exactly, but that this is uh, the build. This is the build, but so yeah, <laughs> exactly. What yeah. three, etc. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So there's no, there's no, well, there's no. Somebody builds it, David. Yeah. 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 Like this, this yeah. is yeah, it, it is, and I mean that's that's maybe that's not. I mean, there's definitely like could be consolidation work here, like all the subsystem doing their own thing, which is you know scraping yeah, scraping like, things from like, patch. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We have like. Just the next slide. Uh, that's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool.